Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I am your host, Orst, and today we are finishing up our advanced Postman series on Postman Visualizer. Prior to this video, we had looked at a Postman API, or the APIs tab here at the top right of the collections area. What this does is it allows you to create APIs in a very streamlined, functional way, combining all of the best features of Postman and putting them all into one place. Um, it's a very great tool and I would recommend it. You can uh, get more on that video uh, to the right of me. Additionally, if you're just getting started with advanced concepts, I would recommend beginning from this uh, tutorial series, the advanced uh, Postman. Again, you see that to the right. And lastly, if you're just getting started with Postman, go ahead and uh, check out the intro series. So to get started with Postman Visualizer, at the end of the day, what it really is, is a full HTML renderer. It allows you to view data in different types of visualizations with JavaScript, CSS, uh, and HTML. So it's really powerful in that fashion where we can take data from APIs, inject them into HTML templates, and then view how that data looks. And so today we're going to cover that with two examples, one from Postman and then one that I created. Um, so on the requirements, what you will need for this is a very couple, just a couple things. One you'll need is a, an API request response. So something in a collection that we can get data from, regardless if it's numbers, strings, anything really. And then we'll need a HTML and a CSS template, and, and that's it. Um, it does have some other powerful features in the back end, such as using templating technology, such as um, handlebars.js. Uh, I'll include a link in the description to that, but it allows you to uh, create functions that allow you to duplicate HTML tags, uh, data, etc. Um, within uh, that template. You do not need to use it. However, it does make your HTML templates much smaller, um, so you don't need to throw in a bunch of HTML. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and look at the Visualizer DIY bar chart. So this is something provided by Postman in their uh, visualization documentation. You can uh, go ahead and once you uh, have imported it, um, I'll have it in the link, we're just going to go ahead and click send. And so you'll see we get our normal type of data back that we would with any Postman echo post. And then if we go to our visualize beta here, we get to see that they actually imported a chart visualization technology called chart.js. Uh, it's very powerful. And you can see we were able to import the data in there into these different um, bar graphs. So if we go back to our pretty view, we can see that the data here, they correlated with the labels here. And so we're going to kind of go over how they did this and then look at what um, I did on my end. So all of this is really encompassed in the tests part. So we can forget about the body since that's just a normal Postman Echo body. They just, all they did is since it's a Postman Echo, they just shoot random data at it with these um, random variables here. And then they know they get it back out. So in our tests, this is where all the magic happens. We create a constant called response and we pull out the response in JSON, um, assuming it's JSON. Then we create a constant uh, visual or viz data. And this is just a data object that takes out the values here and collects them or makes it smaller and easier to consume in our template. So we have uh, labels and then we have data as we saw there before. Now here we have our template. And so I won't go over all this, but exactly uh, what it's doing is it's taking, it's creating HTML and we're creating a, a canvas I, with uh, my chart we pull out uh, chart.js uh, uh, from a CDN. So we pull out that JavaScript. We create um, the, the chart within here. And then we leave the values that we need blank because we will insert them later using uh, pm.getData. So once we've done all that and, and put this together, just at the bottom here, we access that data using, again, pm.getData. And we pass in the the data value from here. So this is what we're passing in as value. 
you pass in value that data as you noticed above that that's basically this data that data and here we have this data that labels and at the end we update the chart and it should render the last thing we need to do to put a ribbon on it is call the pm visualizer set command and what this does is it allows us to inject our template and inject the viz data and combine them together to create uh, what we have seen in the visualize tab there and that's really it so i'll go ahead and run it one more time and you'll see we get different data since it's sending us random uh, country codes random data etc so now um, i'm going to go over to my example and I call it Visualizer Line Graph. So I noticed that on their website, they have a heat map. They have a, a map of a country. I'm not, not sure what it is. And then they have a bar chart. So I wanted to create a, a line graph. And what better to work with line graphs than with uh, financial data, stock data? So I'd like to uh, give a shout out to worldtradingdata.com. Uh, I was able to get an API key from them. Uh, they have a great offering for 250 requests per day for free. And so um, thanks to them, I was able to pull some uh, live daily data back on different stocks and throw it into here to uh, demo out a uh, visualizer. So here in our get intraday, um, intraday stock shares, all we're doing is sending an API get request to their uh, intraday API with the stock symbol, in this case, which is Snap for Snapchat, and then the token, which uh, they have as a, a demo token available, but then I also obtained another token to show uh, different stocks. So we're gonna go over the test real quick and see all, all I did is basically exactly the same thing. I get my response, I have my visual data, which is just the, uh, I require the symbol, the stock exchange, the labels, in this case, which is labels are the date or t date time, and then the actual uh, data is values of a volume or stock shares. So in here, I do the exactly same thing. I went actually on chart.js and pulled the script down. I had to get uh, slightly different things in order to make it look nice. Uh, that's basically just with the time format. And again, you can see within the chart, I update the labels and the data in separate uh, responses uh, or in the PM that get data below. And here I'm just, you know, filling out what I want to see with the graph. And then at the end, we have, again, what I mentioned. So I change the title to the symbol on what stock exchange. I change the label to the uh, symbol share count. And that's actually every bubble point. Here, the data is just the, the volume of shares at that time that have traded. And then here we have the labels, which is just uh, the shares that I put in there or the, yes. So now that you've seen all this, I'll go ahead and uh, we, again, do pm.visualizer set data, throw that in there, and we should see a, a nice line chart of yesterday. So we continue in our response, we get the symbol, the stock exchange, the intraday, which I get an array of these, of actually these dates, and then the volumes, and that's it. So now we go ahead and look at visualize. And I really like this because it shows a lot about what we see. So see, we can actually see the day trading volume at a certain time of how the stock was doing. So this is how Snapchat performed on New York Stock Exchange yesterday. So um, once I actually saw this, it kind of wowed me. I didn't realize I was going to get so much data, but uh, it all worked out. And you get to see the, I guess, it looks pretty volatile uh, yesterday. So the volatility of Snapchat on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and so in order to really uh, put this together, I'd like to show different, um, different stock exchanges, or excuse me, different stocks. So we're going to go ahead and change this to oh we have Microsoft in there so that should go and show us how Microsoft performed on the Nasdaq so granted they have more shares it doesn't look as uh, volatile because we go up to 70,000 but you get to see all the trading data here at the end for Microsoft on Nasdaq 
Well, why don't we go ahead and look at Facebook. I get to see how Facebook performed. And as I was mentioning, uh, these dot tooltips, we can see the actual label. In this case, I made it a uh, Facebook count share and then the actual amount of volumes of shares at that time. And then we'll go over everyone's favorite Apple. And there you go. That's interesting. It's very high. But you get to see on this very nice tooltip, not only the share count, but also the time that it was. So that makes it very useful. Um, so yeah, that's really all I wanted to show you within here. Now, if you do run into issues, which you can do is, uh, and I did, so I recommend you can right click on the visualization, or even if you don't have a visualization in here, you can still right click on it and look at inspect. Or if you do F12, since it's just like a, a web browser, you can get the developer tools. So within here, you actually can inspect under the body of elements exactly what we had in our test script. So this is exactly the same thing that we have in our test script that's just rendered in HTML. And so if you're running into issues, the console here at the bottom is really what's going to be important. This will show us any errors that we get, and it will lead you to um, resolving any of those errors. In my case, I had errors with not importing the right library at the right time. So I see I have moment.js. I, I was importing it after chart.js and it wouldn't render. Um, so this was really useful in helping me debug. Additionally, since it works just like any other any other um, developer tool, you can actually scroll over elements within here. Since this is an iframe, you might not be able to get everything. But again, I'd mentioned the console is definitely the most useful thing to see in here. And again, if you ever want to look at other stuff within here, like the network, how it, the API performed, you can see that data within here as well, um, cookies, etc. And that about does it. So again, I thank you for uh, following me on this journey. If you really like this video, uh, please go ahead and uh, subscribe. And to be sure you get the next video when it comes out, click the bell for notifications. Um, if it also was valuable to you, go ahead and uh, give it a like. Uh, so I'll catch you with guys in the next video and just want to give one more shout out to uh, worldtradingdata.com. Thank you for uh, helping me with this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned.